Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. If you like this episode, please remember to hit the like button and leave a comment or two. Then subscribe and click on the bell to receive notifications of whenever we release new videos. Also, please remember to share them to your social media. Welcome back to Scary Bear Attacks. Today's episode takes us to the Elephant Back Loop Trail in Yellowstone National Park. The park is seated on the side of the world's largest batholith volcano, which provides the energy for the geysers and geothermal phenomenon here. This area is around 8,000 feet high in elevation, and is thickly timbered rolling hills overlooking Yellowstone Lake. The forests primarily of lodgepole pine are 150 to 300 years old, and are described by the Yellowstone Board of Review report regarding this episode as gray and brown in color. Given the age of the forest and the amount of duff accumulated on the forest floor, many forms of edible fungi grow on the ground and deadfall trees. These fungi provide a valuable source of nutrients to animals in the area and perform a vital function in the ecosystem. Animals like elk, deer, and moose will often dine on mushrooms whenever they can find them. Of the predators in the area, only bobcats and cougars are not known to consume mushrooms. But wolves, coyotes, as well as black bears and grizzly bears frequently seek them out as fare. Elephant Back Trail climbs 800 feet over its duration, which is only one and a half miles long. About eight-tenths of a mile up the trail is a fork. The left route leads directly to the overlook, which grants visitors a stunning view of the lake. The right route winds a bit more, but ends at the same overlook. As far as trails go, it isn't much of a trail, as it only takes visitors an hour or so to complete the loop. But if danger were measured by distance, it may be one of the most dangerous trails in the world. On Thursday, August 6, 2015, 63-year-old Lance Crosby was performing his duties at Lake Medical Clinic, where he had worked for the past five years. He was a native of Billings, Montana, and an avid hiker and outdoorsman. Just before lunchtime, Lance's co-workers reported seeing him at the medical center. He had recently injured his ankle and was in the habit of going out for walks near the center to help it heal and rehabilitate it. Lance enjoyed taking shortcuts through trail circuits just to wander through the stands of trees. On this day, he took no firearm nor bear spray with him. His co-workers watched Lance walk off along the road toward Elephant Back Trail and return to their duties. On August 7th, Lance was expected at the center for work, but didn't show up at the start of his 8 a.m. shift. The staff thought this was peculiar, as he wasn't the kind of person to be late, and definitely would have called in had he come down with an illness. By 9 a.m., the staff at the medical center called in and reported Lance missing. Park rangers immediately formed a search team, and foot search teams began searching on Yellowstone Lake Beach, Natural Bridge Road, and Elephant Back Trail. During the search on Elephant Back Trail, a ranger discovered a carnivore food cache with a boot protruding ominously from beneath it. The ranger immediately backed out of the area, and all hikers were ordered to leave to preserve safety and evidence. An investigative team comprised of law enforcement officers, biologists, and medical professionals was formed. After the report of the carnivore food cache had reached the team, they prepared for a body recovery. About a half mile northeast of the trail, rangers heard a cub bark three or four times as they approached. They observed a sow with dark brown legs and a light brown rump running away from the cache site. Once at the site, the investigative team began gathering evidence. They could see grizzly tracks from one sow and at least one cub near Lance's body. The bears had partially eaten his remains and then covered him in dirt and pine needles, indicating they were planning on returning to eat the rest of him after digesting the portions they had already consumed. Lance's remains were removed by helicopter and analyzed by forensic experts. They found deep bruising and puncture wounds on his arms, hands, head, face, shoulders, and upper back, indicating that he was alive when these wounds were inflicted. He had attempted to defend himself during the bear attack based on the location of the wounds on his arms and hands. The puncture wounds on Lance's corpse were measured for comparison with the teeth of any bear thought to have been involved. After further analysis, Lance was found to have died from blunt force trauma to the area near his brain stem. He'd been struck by the sow's paws with enough force that the blows had caused his death. At the attack scene, forensic experts collected bear hair samples and bodily fluids from the bears. They discovered that the grizzly had killed Crosby in an ambush and left him with very little time to react. He was face down with his left arm beneath his chest and his left leg crossed over his right calf. 
I've posted pictures of the attack site sketched by the forensics teams, as well as the picture of the dead bear on my Patreon link below. These images would not pass YouTube guidelines, so you can see them there. They are disturbing, at least as disturbing as a sketch of a bear attack scene in a photo of a dead bear can be, so look at them at your own discretion. Lance's baseball cap was found near his left boot, and his body was buried right where the attack had occurred, meaning the grizzly had not dragged him away at all. The investigators also reported that she had not run upon him, but the attack happened from extremely close range. The soil around the attack site wasn't disturbed. There were no tissue or clothing fragments strewn about, and his possessions were found near his body. He didn't even have time to run. The biologists on the scene searched for natural feeding behaviors and evidence. Bear day beds and scat were located right next to rock cairns and other human-created rock formations left by prior visitors. DNA evidence was pulled from scat piles, and profiles from a sow and a cub were identified. They determined that the bears were likely foraging for mushrooms, and Lance had walked right up to them just before the attack. They were likely devouring mushrooms or napping just afterward when the surprise confrontation occurred. Equipped with this knowledge, biologists set out foot snare traps at the attack scene, hoping to catch the sow when she returned to her food cache. The night following the attack, she triggered the snare, and it held her fast until bear researchers could tranquilize her. Upon confirming through DNA evidence and bite wound measurements that they had the right bear, officials ordered the sow to be euthanized. As for her cubs, they were also trapped in the following days. They were not killed, but authorities deemed them to possibly be conditioned to see people as food. They were sent to a zoo to live out the remainder of their lives. After euthanizing the sow, investigators determined that she was only 259 pounds, which is thin for a grizzly bear. She had invested much of her food in the one-year-old cubs she had been raising. Regarding euthanizing grizzlies, park officials stated that they do not take the matter lightly. Had the sow been determined to have acted in defense of her cubs, she would likely have been left alone, if not relocated to areas further from civilization. Given that she had consumed portions of Lance's body and cached his remains for later consumption, they had no choice in the matter. Lance Crosby's death was the eighth human fatality in Yellowstone since 1916, but the fifth since 1984. Forty-four people have reportedly been injured by bears in Yellowstone National Park over its 150-year history. Grizzly numbers are estimated to be over 1,000 bears in the greater Yellowstone area, with the park only claiming 150 to 200 grizzlies within its boundaries. That means the difference of up to 800 grizzly bears are spread all around Montana, Idaho, and Wyoming. After reviewing the facts surrounding this episode, I'm left with a few questions for you. If Lance had been packing bear spray, would he even have had time to dispense it? Was the sow defending her mushroom feeding grounds, or did she predate on Lance? Do you think the cubs would have copied the behavior they saw the sow do and consider humans as a source of food in their future? That's an ominous thought. Grizzly bears in the zoo watching something they think of as food walk by and stare at them and throw peanuts at them all day. Will you cast an extra cautious glance over your shoulder next time you're out picking mushrooms? I'll be glad to read and respond to your thoughts, so please post them in the comments section below and let's talk about it. Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. If you've enjoyed this episode, please consider clicking on the like button and clicking on the bell icon. We'll help you know when we post our new episodes. Posting our video links to your social media profiles furthers awareness, and it's fun. We slashed our prices in our merch store, linked below. So check out the bargains there while you shop. As a member of our human community, remember to adventure bravely and be careful out there, especially in bear country.